Every year, humanity consumes around about 2 billion tonnes of steel. And every year, as a result of that, we emit around about 3.5 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. These bricks represent the global steelmaking industry. These blue bricks are meant to indicate steel that's made from iron ore, and the red bricks indicate steel that's mostly been made from recycled scrap metal. Now, of course, these two different ways of making steel are spread all over the world, so we should probably mix the bricks up somewhat. But the point is that these are the proportions of the two different ways we make steel. Now, what's really interesting is that the iron that goes into steel making is usually turned into steel using what's called a blast furnace, while the scrap mostly ends up in something called an electric arc furnace. And those are two different types of furnaces for making steel with. The carbon emissions from the blast furnace are roughly three times as high as the carbon emissions that would come out of an electric arc furnace. And so as a result of that, there's an obvious question as to whether we should be recycling more scrap as opposed to focusing on iron-based steel making. Now these extra blocks, these indicate roughly the sort of extra scrap that we think is out there that is not currently recycled on a yearly basis. These represent things like steel reinforcement that's maybe been stuck in foundations after a building has been demolished but are left in the ground forever, ships that have sunk to the bottom of the sea, or maybe cars that have ended up on the scrap heap. We can add these into the mix and we can take out a couple of blue blocks that represent the iron ore that would no longer be needed if we could get hold of that extra scrap. Of course, what we see is that at a global level, nothing much has really changed. The big picture has stayed exactly the same. This means we can't decarbonize the global steelmaking industry just by focusing on recycling alone. And in fact, there's a bit of a risk if we think that that would be true. And that risk is as follows. If one part of the world, one region or one city or one country or one industry decides that they're going to focus solely on getting hold of all the scrap they can and recycling that, leaving the rest of the world with iron ore based steel making, then of course that country who's now got all the scrap, they can say that their emissions have dropped. And of course that's true because to make steel from scrap emits one third of the emissions than it would take to make steel from iron ore. But nothing's changed. At a global scale, emissions are still the same. And yes, there, there could be some benefits where if this scrap used to travel halfway around the world in order to be recycled, and it no longer does, there's a decrease in some transport emissions related to that. But that's pretty small compared to this big picture. That's why instead of focusing on who gets which bit of scrap and trying to reshuffle these bricks, we're better off kind of leaving them where they were and instead focusing on the bigger question of how we decarbonize both iron-based steelmaking and scrap-based steelmaking. Both of these things need to be decarbonized at the same time. And we call that dual decarbonization. One final thing, it's important to recognize how much of the emissions from this industry come from these two different ways of making steel. And these balloons give an indication of the emissions from those two different technologies. This blue balloon is the size of all of the emissions that come from iron-based steelmaking. And this red balloon is the equivalent size for all of those which come from scrap-based steelmaking. 90% of the emissions from the global steel industry come from the iron-based steelmaking. And that is why it is there that the priority needs to be given to try to decarbonize this industry. Click the link below to find out more.